Hello, welcome to sunny Edinburgh. This is Holyrood Distillery. I'm Mark Watson, the head distiller. And today I'm gonna to take you around Holyrood Distillery, see behind the scenes a little bit. And we're gonna talk about our two expressions of our Made by Edinburgh 2022 cast program. Come with me. So in 2019, Holyrood Distillery opened its doors for the first time and we started creating spirit. And you can see our lovely home behind us which is a uh, re, well, it's, it's a converted coal shed from the 1800s um, that was the end of the Innocent Railway, which was one of the first railways in the city, but also uh, one of the, uh, the biggest uh, coal depots for, for the power of Edinburgh. And that relates this year to our cask program. Um, obviously Edinburgh was called Old Reeky or Old Smoky and this year's cast program relates to uh, smoke in whiskey and how we can create and use it. We're just about to go downstairs into the distillery. This is the place you don't get to on tours. So we'll go through there, we'll talk a little bit about our malt, we'll dodge all the pipe work and then we'll head upstairs to the actual, the actual mash tun. Friday, it's cleaning day. The yeast is just going into the fermenter just now behind us. So I kind of all go. The, ma uh, the mash for the next mash is on our right here. And we're going to talk a little bit about the individual components that goes into the made by Edinburgh mashes. So for the, the Roush malt one, the smoked one, the brewer smoked one, and we've actually finished mashing that one for, for today. Uh, so the next one we're mashing is the heavily peated. So we've got the component parts behind us here. We've got the amber malt, which is a specialty malt um, that's going to give us some caramels and some, some biscuity flavors. We've then got our heavily peated malt, which you can't smell it, um, but you can just rub on your hands and it's already the smoke is coming through on that. And then you've got the Maris Otter. which is our heritage brewing malt. And that's adding texture and, uh, and complexity to the, to the mash bill. So you can see here, Holder Distillery, it's really tight. And uh, so everything we bring in here has to have a purpose. And uh, that's why you don't see a mill, you don't see any silos. Um, so we use crisp maltings and they bring our stuff in already crushed and uh, they give us a huge breadth of choice for different types of specialty malt. Uh, we have different, type or different types of heritage malt and brewer's malt to build our recipes with. We'll head upstairs to the mash tun. Ooh, there's yeast in there. That's our yeast that's just going in. So the yeast gets hydrated with the wort. It's coming down into the washback. Allows to... Um, to come up to temperature and it starts to fob and then we'll pump that straight into the wash back. Let's go through our labyrinth of doors. Welcome to our whiskey distillery. This is our mash tun. This, uh, like I said, we're, we're mashing the heavily peated uh, cask program expression right now. So that includes the Maris Otter, the Amber, and the heavily peated Isla. And what we do is we take 1.25 tons of that, goes into the mash tun with water at 69 degrees. And when they combine together, we lose temperature and the mashing temperature is between 62 and 64. Today, it was a little bit on the high side at 64. So we'll just watch this one all the way through and make adjustments on that. Then we'll add our second water at 75 degrees and then we'll add our third water at 83 degrees plus. And that will start, that's, that's our creation of our wort. That's the base of everything that we, we do here is the base recipe going through. Now the Roush malt, the brewer's malt, is slightly different. 
that one we use caramel for sweetness. We use uh, our East Lothian local barley as our base malt. And then we use the Roush malt for that savory smokiness. Um, it comes across like, uh, like frazzles, really, like a baconiness. And when we've created recipes like that, the next thing we've got to do is, is decide what yeast strain that we're going to do and use with that. So um, there's no secrets here. We, we talk about everything. We're very open and honest about how we make stuff. So this is what we're mashing today. And the yeast strain that we chose for this made by Edinburgh, the heavily peated one, is the Kvike yeast strain. And that is a Norwegian farmhouse yeast strain that when you put under loads of stress, which is high, high ABV or high sugar wort and high temperatures, which is what happens in distilling, creates a really uh, bright orangey flavor to it. And that's what we're looking to do by using this yeast strain is really round out that recipe. You've got three quite heavy flavors there, cereally, malty, biscuity. And we want to brighten that up by adding in the fruit and, the, and, and bring that in. And then we also use the distiller's yeast in this one, which is MG Plus, which is adding a creaminess to the underlyingness of it. With the Roush malt, which is the other one, we have the East Lothian barley, the Cara malt, and the Roush malt. And then we use the Edinburgh ale yeast with that one. And that, that gives a really, that's got a really interesting story actually. In, in the, there was no refrigeration in Edinburgh. And therefore, when the old breweries were using yeast, they were trying to get the freshest yeast. So they all used to work with each other, transport the yeast around the city. And that's where Edinburgh ale yeast came from. So we'll move on to our fermenters now. Or washbacks we're not brewing and we'll see how active the fermentations are for our whiskey production so because we've been on shutdown this week for a little portion of this week normally our fermentation times are a bit lower but these ones are gonna be super long this week these ones are gonna be 120 hours plus so create some really different flavors with it once the fermentation is finished, the gravity has gone all the way down to one. We will then put it into the wash still. You can see the wash still is on right now. And the wash still will take it from an 8% unhopped beer, if you will, to a 31% low wine, as it's called. Um, and that low wine will be full of those flavors we just discussed before, but also full of the patina of the still itself. And we'll distill that from, when it comes across at the start, about 55%, and it will come all the way down to 1%. Then, once it's finished in there, we'll go straight into the spirit still. Our spirit still isn't running today. Well, it is running today, but just not just now. Um, and that will uh, distill the spirit to what we use for cast racking. And on both these recipes, we use 10 minutes ahead and then we'll cut the spirit at 55%. Now, you think, oh, Mark, that's really low. It is a really low cut point. And one of the reasons for that is with our PhD that we're getting uh, run between us and Crisp, we found that the longer in the run you go, the more of the specialty malt flavor and the peated flavor comes through. So it's our job to juggle that between when the faints come through. But as you can see, we've got a really tall, stills with a boil ball so for us our faints come a lot later because we've got a lot of reflux in there so before we go into the barrel room and talk about the casks that go into this we'll go in nose and we'll taste the two expressions so i'll go today right so we're going to start with the German smoked Rausch malt. Always put your caps back on. So um, this is at 60%, so feel free to add a, a splash of water to it or add something to it if you want to. It's, it's completely up to you about how you want to drink it. For us, you know, we, we like to try it at 60% and then we'll normally add some water to it when we're doing some further sensory analysis. But for me, 
on the nose, there's like an underlying uh, savory note to it. There's like um, ginger snaps and frazzles, which is really interesting. And that's the German smoked malt that's coming out from underneath that. And then uh, underneath that, there's like a little hint of like melon or cantaloupe, and that's from the Edinburgh Ale Yeast. Then on the palate, the first thing that you notice is the sweetness. It's really sweet up front. It, it has like a, like a nice biscuity sort of center with like that ginger snap coming through. Um, and at the end, that sort of uh, lime and melons kind of uh, sits really nicely together. So it feels like there's a lot going on within the flavor profile itself. The other nice thing about it is, you can't see it, you might be able to see it in the glasses, it really coats the mouth and we've got a lot of texture to it. And that's what we're trying to drive in. We're trying to keep all the flavors really bright and really clear and, and, and really well-rounded, but we're also trying to drive in the, the, the texture of the whiskey and give it really like a really nice, clean texture. We'll move on to the next one, the heavily peated one. Always replace your caps. And don't knock anything over. So the heavily peated one, we've kind of seen the process of it being made. We've followed it into the fermenters. It's been in the stills. And what we're trying to get across is, with this one, about is, is about how we use smoke if we're using Isla peat. This is um, really as if we were picking up the distillery and plonking it down on Isla for the day. Um, how would we create something that is sort of paying homage to Isla, but also um, something that is uniquely Holyrood? And I think that's the really exciting thing when we're, when we're creating recipes like this. So on the nose, it's like a lightly smoke to it. Um, you can kind of get wisps of smoke, but there's the orange is certainly there. There's a little bit of maltiness and uh, it's quite bright as well. And then on the taste, It's like getting hit by a baseball bat of smoke. Um, it just hits you right up front. And then once you, once you move past that, you get the oranginess. There's like a bitterness to it. There's like a, a zestiness to it. And then right at the end, there's all the sweetness. And it's really awesome to enjoy. And the, as you drink it, you feel it. It, it like coats your tongue. Um, it, it, it has some really interesting complexity within the actual smoke itself. Um, and it's just, for us, a really exciting spirit to play with. Cool. So, we'll let Connor go past, he's got stuff to do. And we'll go through into the barrel room. So, welcome to the barrel room at Holyrood Distillery. We've actually got the two casks that we're gonna use for the cask program here. We've got the Sherry Hogshead here, and then we've got the Port Hogshead um, over to the right. Uh, now this is an Oloroso barrel. We're actually using PX and uh, Sherry Cream, or uh, PX mixed with Oloroso for the Made by Edinburgh 2022 this year. Um, and for the Port barrel, the reason why we're using the port barrel with the Roush malt is with that underlying savory note, we're wanting to fill in the gaps to bring that, that flavor well-rounded. We're gonna use that juiciness, the tartness, and the toastedness of the port barrel to deliver and fill in those gaps of the new make and really complete that new make out with some juiciness and some fruitiness. And um, that's been our trip around the distillery and I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have any more questions or want to learn any more, then please get in touch with us at Hollywood Distillery and we'll help you out. Have a great day.